Hey, all, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're now talking sports on The Breakfast. English football clubs are doing well in Europe. Four EPL teams are in the semi-finals of the continent's two top club competitions. The UEFA Champions League is looking like it's going to be an all-England final with Manchester City winning the first leg of their semi-final match and Chelsea forcing Real Madrid to a draw at home. Manchester United beat Roma 6-2 in the Europa semi-final match yesterday and only Arsenal failed to win or play a draw. Wally Scott is here with us as usual. Good morning, Wally Scott. Good morning, Anna. So talking about this, are we going to have like an all English, you know, uh, Champions League and Europa League this year? That's very possible because um, it, it's been simple. Um, Chelsea have got a draw and a way draw, which means they're going to play the next match at home and they just could concentrate on, on the match and win. And um, um, Man City have got a 2-1 victory against Paris Saint-Germain and they, they actually got that one away too. So they're going to be playing their next match on Tuesday next week at the Etihad at home, at their home. So all things being equal, I think um, they should have both qualified into the finals, which means it just could be a Chelsea against Manchester City finals. Now, the Europa League, which is the second tier of the Champions League, um, Man City, Manchester United actually came from a 2-1 um, loss yesterday, actually went 6-2 eventually, which means they are all through to the finals, all things being equal. And then, yeah, Arsenal got to a 2-1, but 2-1 is not too tough for an away match. You can actually mm -hmm. go away and actually get just one goal or two goals and make it through. So we just might be seeing an all four um, English team in the finals. But the question everybody should be asking everyone right now is, how did they do it? I was going to ask that. How, 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 how did the English, English from nowhere yeah, now, from all where? These years, where you know, the truth from? is, unlike Nigerians, yes. Nigerians don't have a maintenance culture. Hmm. If our car never stop work, we know this. At least we can change the oil. We can change oil. <laughs> yeah, you know? You know, but the truth is, you know, um, most football clubs across the world are like Nigerians. They are waiting for the spare parts to be really very rusty, hmm. almost falling out, before they start making changes and start changing the parts. And that's what most of the English clubs didn't do. Hmm. Initially, the owners in the English clubs said, listen, you guys are telling us to bring money, to buy players, win something. The guys said, listen, we can't win if we don't buy players now. So the guys say, good. Here's the money, buy players. So they started buying players. Mm. Before the guys became rusty, they started buying new players, mm. you know? So I don't know, they, um, you see Man United go to the market with like 350 million pounds. You know, you hear that kind of money and you ask yourself, are you in the wrong profession, you know? So, so what should clubs really? from, or, or rather, is this something that clubs from other nationalities should learn? Yes, you know, um, look at a club like Barcelona, who the whole world now feels are living on past glory. Mm. They've got almighty Lionel Messi, who is going rusty, really. You've got Bayern Munich, who have got all the stars in the world. Where's Real all, Madrid in all, all that? basically old school. Real Madrid have lost it all. The day they lost Ronaldo, he went with the blueprints of the club. And then, you know, they don't, don't win anymore, you know. And they brought in Eden Hazard who came oversized, who came tired. You know, all of these clubs have big names. And can, these names can sell their jerseys for them, make good money off the shelves in, in market. That's all they can make. What can they do on the field of play? We are looking at a, an Arsenal, for example. Mm. Went to the market, got a party, a young man in the midfield. Went to the market and went to the academy and got a 16, 17-year-old boy in um, Bukayo Saka. Mm. You know, you look at a Manchester United who actually at the point we're using strikers who are less than 18, Rashford, Mason, Greenwood, you know, they were not scared of using these boys. It wasn't our names now. The English clubs went to the market to get what they needed, spent money. Got the talent and the they skills. They didn't look back when they were, they, they, they were in pricing. It was a blank check. Mm. They knew what they wanted, went for it, and then balanced it with youngsters from the academies, which means they were changing their spare parts before it became rusty. Yes. So how come other clubs are not doing the same? They should know that uh, all of these players have their expiry data. So well. I think some yeah. clubs just tend to look at more of the marketing strategy than the, what they do on the field of play, mm -hmm. and then get carried away while making the money. Hmm. You know, yeah, you know, so most of them just feel like, buy Ronaldo, he will sell his shirts for us in less than one hour. And yes, he did. When Ronaldo got to Juventus, his, his, his jerseys were sold out in the market in Italy alone in one hour. Wow. Good money. Mm -hmm. Ronaldo has been able to prove that on and off the pitch. You know, but how many players have these guys bought that have done that, not only selling jerseys, but proving your, you see, it's not about, you see, now it's, it's about, the guys now realize, listen, we've been spending too much time making money. We're forgetting about the football itself. You know, the football itself is now suffering because, okay, good. Four English teams, 
might be in the finals of both conservative championships at the end of the day because they were thinking about making money here, but they were also thinking about the football on the field. So what's the implication of having four English teams in the final? Implications is nothing really. I think it just, it just opens the eyes of other clubs. Okay. Opens the eyes of other leagues and say, listen, oh, this is what these guys did right. What are they doing right? Okay, we're not doing right. Yes, we want to make money. We have been making money. We still are making money. But we've forgotten the football itself. The essence of the whole thing, the source mm -hmm. of the whole thing is football. It's forgotten now mm -hmm. by these clubs. They'd rather buy a Lionel Messi, a Ronaldo, a Kaká. They'd rather buy that Angel Di Maria, Mbappe, to make money. They don't really think about it. Nobody's calling the manager to the, to the boardroom. I know some club managers have complained. I said, listen, when you want to start a, a Super League, you didn't call the coaches, the players, that you want to join an European Super League. Nobody calls the coaches. You want to buy a player to make money. Have you asked the coach, can he fit into your team? Will he play rights in your team? We've forgotten the source is football. It's about making money now. And it's teamwork. It's teamwork. So if you buy a player to make money, to sell jerseys, I just dump him on the coach and to do what with him. Hmm. You didn't ask him in the first place, what should I do with this All right, guy? so aside, you know, great decisions regarding what players to buy and when, what else are they doing right? That's about it, really. I think um, they've refused to forget their source despite all. Don't forget that the English um, society... Are We're very, not looking at coaching very, styles. They are very traditional. Mm. And um, the English fans always have a say in what the clubs do. Mm. unlike other clubs. Right. So the English fans will protest, will come to you and say, listen, we don't want this coach, mm -hmm. we want this player, you know. It's worked for them. You know, and I think that's all they do right. The coaches, the English teams are beginning to get less patience these days. You don't do well once, twice, thrice, you are gone, you know. So, they, they, so the coaches who are world class, in tune with, with what's happening in the world today, I think all that has worked for them eventually. Mm. But most importantly, they've not forgotten the source, which is football really. All right, thank you, Wally thank Scott, you, uh, for bringing us yes, up to speed you. and uh, you. European glory and all of the <laughs> football talk. All right, so yes, like Justin said, that's where we call it a day. We've gone through a run of all the top trending stories, yes, talking yes. about Fada and Baka calling on President Muhammadu to resign, mm -hmm. the whole issue with Eurofi and the yes, platform. We, we talked about the big issue in economics the right now. Bank and the FBN. Exactly, and then wrapped it up with uh, the River State Liberty. Security and, of course, uh, sports. Sports with, sports with Scott. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the name of your show should be. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for joining us again on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Annetta Felix. And I'm Justin Akadanye. Do have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Yes, bye-bye.